This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say, our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the Cajun, the smoked savory to border, and the Discord. Can't go wrong with any of the seasonings. That is over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLUCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Don't forget to check out the Mad Canadian social media sites to figure out where he's heading this weekend. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Now, we are recording this on Veterans Day. I would like to point that out. I know most people aren't going to listen until two days later. We are recording this on Veterans Day, and I would like to point out the Iron Bean Coffee Company is, in fact, a veteran-owned coffee roaster. Uh, They're also a small batch made-to-order roaster they don't roast to order would actually be the correct term they don't actually roast your beans until you order them that way you're always getting fresh roast if you're getting your beans freshly ground by them then they're they they are that they're freshly ground uh if, you, if you've never freshly ground your own coffee it's, it's much better but if that's not necessarily a thing you want to deal with you can get it ground from them and you know it's freshly ground because you know it wasn't even roasted until you ordered it They have an amazing selection of coffees. Uh, They don't have, uh, excuse me, they do have uh, a bunch of dark roast, medium roast, a couple light roast, a few flavored coffees. Uh, The flavored coffees includes a carrot cake, a blueberry, and a mint chocolate chip flavored coffee. But don't, uh, but if you're, if you're not a flavored coffee person, uh, I could recommend maybe the cast iron, or I have right here a bag of ride or die for my uh, YouTube watchers that's a tumbled with cocoa nibs and vanilla beans. Hell yeah. Is what it says on that back. So you can find that coffee. You can find a bunch of other coffees and free shipping of on orders over $50 at ironbeancoffee.com. That's iron bean coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, YouTube? YouTube, what's up? So, uh, yeah, that's uh, what what's everyone doing on Saturday? We warned you. We yeah, warned there's, you. There's a chance it ha- could happen. Yeah, it's uh, it sucks. Um. We still got plenty to talk about today, so we're we're here for you. So don't worry too much about that. But uh, let's go ahead, Kyle, and rejoin our audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? All right, Jared. <laughs> all right. That's, isn't that my line? <laughs> How are you doing? Aren't I supposed to be the one that comes in? Well, I guess I'm doing okay. I'm fine, I guess. I'm okay over here. I guess I'm doing okay. I'm fine. Isn't that my role? <laughs> Stop stealing my bit, Kyle. <laughs> uh, All yeah. right. Well, let's let's just <laughs> jump right into it. I guess. <laughs> well, this is normally it? this is normally what we say we got a ton to talk about today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let's let's no cu- surprise bye week. Guys, it's just surprise bye week. We had yep. warned you. We had warned you uh, many times during the course of the first few games and in the lead up to this delayed season that there was a pretty slim chance that Ohio State was going to end up playing all of these games. We told you that Ohio State did, in fact, have a bye week that we just didn't know which week it was. Mm-hmm. Yep, now we know. And we're, and we're talking about the Ohio State-Maryland game being canceled. And uh, yeah. even, even before... It all started. We're like, our concerns was the teams on the East Coast there. Yeah. Maryland and Rutgers. Got Rutgers out of the way. Yeah. Unfortunately, Maryland was just just an unfortunate timing right now. Well, and, I, you know what, Kyle? Can I disagree with you on that? I think it's great timing. Okay. Because Ohio State could have 
traveled to Maryland and found out that there was an outbreak on the uh, on the Maryland squad. Worse, there could have been an outbreak on the Maryland squad when they came in for testing on Monday. And the entire Ohio State team could have been also exposed and been a part of this outbreak. Yeah. So does it suck? Ohio State is not playing a game this weekend. Absolutely. We, we, this is an Ohio State podcast. Look at the colors of the graphics on the screen. Look at the logo. Of course, we wanted an Ohio State game this weekend. Of course. But uh, it could have been worse. It is Maryland's issue. It's not Ohio State's issue. And with all, you know, and. I don't want to, I don't mean to belittle the fact that Maryland is having problems. That's not my intent, but again, this is an Ohio state podcast and it's uh, it sucks. I think this would have been a great test for Ohio state uh, to his little brother had been r- doing really well the past two games after a rough start. Uh, I was, I would venture to say that he is probably by far the best quarterback Ohio state would have played to this point in the season. And with Ohio State having some issues in the secondary, uh, I was looking forward to this game. Mm-hmm. And and while I don't real life gamble, betting the over. <laughs> I, I don't know if Ohio State would have covered or not, but yeah, I asked I asked a few people in our Discord. <coughs> excuse me, I asked, I asked a few of our listeners in the Discord how they feel about this game before. It got before it ultimately got canceled. And it also, I just want to say like this news is very fresh for Kyle and I, it, this it is, is like, yeah. this is like two days old for most of the people watching and or listening to this. Uh, mm-hmm. This is only a couple hours old for us. I saw, I saw, I saw Tony and um, Gerdeman and Tom Moore. They're like, well, we just recorded and yeah. Oops. Poof gone. <laughs> yeah. So I asked, I asked our um, listeners, Hey, how do you, how, how do you feel about, um, today or this weekend's game against Maryland, do you feel confident with one or not so good at a 10 and seem to be more, I'd say on average about five, I think for, for people. They, was it they that were, high? Yeah. There, there were some that were, they were like, uh, like three, but there was quite a few, like six, seven, and even an eight in there. So I'd say it was, it was around five. Okay. Was the level of concern from listeners who, responded yeah and i think there was a cause for concern with this game not from a ohio state would lose standpoint although that is always a possibility that is you know purdue and iowa and so on and so forth always a always a possibility but it was a game that could have made ohio state look very bad again the strength of maryland being their passing game the weakness of ohio state being their passing defense. And again, mm-hmm. I'd like to point out that the weakness of most of the really good teams right now are their passing defenses. It's not isolated yeah, I mean, to Ohio every, State. Everybody, everybody, maybe they just forgot about the Alabama game where they you did let up so <laughs> many yards. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, speaking of Bama, Bama versus LSU canceled. Texas A&M at Tennessee canceled. Well, some of these are postponed and some of them are canceled. I, I, whatever. Mm. Uh, Georgia versus Missouri canceled Auburn versus Mississippi state canceled as four SEC games. Uh, there was, I think the air force game got canceled. The Navy or was it army game got canceled? Uh, I think there's something like where the other, the other games that got canceled was Memphis and Navy air force in Wyoming and UL Monroe and Arkansas state. And it's all of them, all of them, except for the air force, Wyoming and the Ohio state, Maryland are postponed but for now come on well who knows honestly who knows uh because we might have the college football playoff maybe actually do the right thing yes and delay the season a bit that's that's the big talk right now whether it happens or not that's the thing that a lot of people are really hoping happens and hope that the the committee looks it over and be like and let's push it back maybe a month. I don't think the committee gets that say. I would say the people who put together the committee get that say. I don't, I don't, I don't know if oh. the, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, but the larger college football playoff, which is really just the BCS mm-hmm. under a new name, it's the same people running it. So that the BCS people just, just push it all back a month. 
That's it. It's just you already play in domes. You're already not selling tickets. You're probably still not going to have actual attendance at the game. Push it back a month. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let everyone get some games under their belt. You're going to put the committee in a place where they're, you know, comparing a six win team versus a nine or 10 win team, or maybe not wins, but games played. And how's that fair for anybody? Yeah. I mean, let's, let's be real for a second. Again, I wanted Ohio state to play this weekend. It's a great thing that they didn't. Cause even if Ohio state was going to win this game, 19 times out of 20, <laughs> that 20th game still exists. Quite frankly, it's a good thing because if Ohio State's undefeated, even if that's 6 and 0, and God forbid that many Ohio State games get canceled, but even if it's 6 and 0, Ohio State's going to go to the playoffs. They're clearly one of the best teams in the country. And they prove it so far this year. I mean, is there issues? Yeah. But you know what? Yeah. It's not as many issues as what we've seen other teams that's beyond the top five, six. And again, Clemson has actually lost. Bama yeah. has their their flaws as well. It's and we've seen that and we've seen Notre no Dame's flaws as well. No one's as good, right? No one. No one, no one, no one is as good right now as the top three or four teams were last year. Yes, absolutely. And, 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 and you can and blame this whole, this whole like practice, delay, yeah. the whole delaying um, late practice and everything else that went on for the what start year, and the what stop nature it is this year. Yeah. Yeah. It, people just aren't, it's just not as crisp and clean of right. performance as what we've seen in the past, absolutely. which is why team chaos has been so dominant this year. Mm -hmm. All of this chaos has moved everyone towards the center. It's like everyone's playing in bad weather. Bad weather neutralizes talent. All of this thing that is 2020 has neutralized talent a bit. Mm -hmm. So as few games as Ohio State plays, the better. Because it just increases the chance of a Iowa-Purdue type thing happening. And again, we were always aware, and by we, I mean me, Kyle, and probably most of the people listening to this, we're all aware that Ohio State was not going to play all of these games. They just weren't. And We'll still be upset. We'll still be pissed that it's yeah, not yeah. happening, but... It could be worse. Is is I'm just taking the silver lining on this. It could mm -hmm. be worse. It could be Ohio State dealing with the outbreak. It could be Maryland dealing with the outbreak after they played Ohio state. And then we're all sitting mm -hmm. around worried that it's could have got a bunch of the Ohio state players as well, but that's I'm not what happened. Yeah. I'm curious about with so many, um, with the outbreak that's going on with Maryland, who do they play the following week? So I, they play Sparty. Oh, and God forbid we lose that game. <laughs> but yeah it's it's all it, it's just this is 2020 this is what we live under right now and mm -hmm. there are bigger tragedies in the world and ohio state will be fine i think yeah. it's basically what it boils down to and it sucks of course it sucks i'm not i'm not trying to tell you it's no big deal and to get over it and blah 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 no i'm not i'm not doing that to you i'm just saying it could be worse it could have yes. Could have been an isolated incident that took out some key Ohio State players to the point where they then would have to go. I mean, Trevor Lawrence. I look at the Steelers right now. Steelers are undefeated in the NFL. And this week they put Ben Roethlisberger on the COVID list. You think Steelers fans are happy to see Mason Rudolph's face again? <laughs> I promise you. I promise you they aren't. Oh boy. All right, Kyle. Yeah. So a bunch of games canceled for this weekend in a slate of games that I will go ahead and say was not all that great to begin with. This was always going to be a light week. 
and mm -hmm. it uh i'm just maybe if you got some short maybe you got to winterize maybe you gotta go do some yard work this is a great weekend just to skip there are absolutely no games don't you dare say it don't you don't you acknowledge the rankings okay i, I tell you what, i'll give you one i'll give you one if you give me one I'm going to acknowledge the rankings real quick. And I'm going to say this because it fits the narrative I want to tell. <laughs> so it's convenient for me. If it's the narrative I want to tell that we need to push back the playoffs of the top five teams, which include Bama, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Clemson, and Texas A&M. Three of those teams, Ohio State, Bama, Texas A&M, aren't playing this weekend due to COVID issues. Push back the playoff. Oh, it'll 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 overlap with the NFL playoffs. You you're not gonna watch a playoff game while we're probably still under lockdown anyway on a Tuesday night, on a Monday night? You're not gonna watch a college football playoff game on a Thursday night? I don't care about the NFL playoffs. Let the NFL playoffs be the NFL playoffs. We're not talking about doing a full slate of games, we're talking about three games. Wait, what are we talking about? We don't have to go up, up against the NFL playoffs. There's lots of days in the week. It's fine. There's seven, in fact. Can can you look that up? Can we get confirmation on that? <laughs> By the way, Ohio State's not playing Alabama. Get that's. Can we stop that? I, I get okay. If you're doing it for they, the they memes, are not. They're not playing. They didn't even talk. If you're there doing wasn't it, any talk, if you're doing it for the memes, if you're doing it for the jokes. If it's, if you're doing it for the lulls, all right, that's fine. Go, go have your fun. Zero chance. Not only that it's happening because it's not happening. Zero chance that anyone wanted it to happen. Anyone with any actual decision-making power. Do you really think Ohio state and Alabama are going to decide to play each other at a venue they haven't picked yet at a venue they haven't picked yet with Who's going to air it? Is CBS going to air it? Is Fox going to air it? Is ESPN going to air it? Who's going to air it? You got to figure out your TV deal. You got to figure out where you're, you got to figure out what stadium you're playing it in. And oh, by the way, you give some of the most control hungry creatures on this planet, which are college football coaches, give them 72 hours to prepare for the biggest game of the season. Are you high? Do you think anyone wanted that? Again, now, if you're doing it for the jokes, uh, go for it. I'm all, I'm all for the jokes. I'm all for the memes. Have fun. But it, no chance that was ever, ever going to happen. No one wanted that. The ADs didn't want it. The school presidents didn't want it. The TV networks would have taken it. But which one would get it? They'd have fought over it. That causes issues. Where are you playing it? The coaches didn't want it. The players probably don't care. But like, you're going to give up a potential seat in the playoff? to play a game on 30 on 72 hour notice, please guys, come on, grow up. Yep. Again, unless you're doing it for the jokes, in which case have fun. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Then, <laughs> what are we getting into? Sloop picks. Yep. Let's get into the sloop picks. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Our guest picker this week is cousin Jay. That's the, I just, I just gave him that nickname. I, did, I was going to say his name. <laughs> then I was like, Oh, I don't know if we ever like asked him, can we say your last name on the podcast? Uh, so we're just going to go with Cousin Jay. Kyle's cousin. Yes. That's, that's where that comes from. <laughs> uh, current, is he the current leader in the slew picks and the online I'm slew picks? I'm pretty sure I have it up right here because I did not do my picks right before we recorded. <laughs> no, of course not. Who would do that? Uh, let's see. Standings overall. Yep. Jay is up by three three games. All right. So a uh, quick caveat to the sloop picks. When I sent the email to Jay, we kind of already knew that a bunch of those sec games were on the chopping block. So I didn't include any of those. Cause there was a lot of the Ohio state game came out of nowhere. It was just surprise. No week. Uh, so we obviously had that game on the schedule, but I did do a last second substitution. I took out Ohio state and Maryland and I put in Iowa and Minnesota and then for the tiebreaker this week 
I made that Wisconsin and Michigan. So our total score tiebreaker is is Wisconsin at Michigan. Uh, I sent those updates to Jay. Again, this is all very the cancellation of the game. All of that is still very fresh for Kyle and I. And I sent that email to Jay. Uh, I, and I, I knew when I sent it to him that I might not hear back from him in time. And last I have, let me hit refresh on my email. Hitting refresh on my email. And oh boy, that's right. Google's having issues. Also, YouTube's down for us right now too in this in our version of reality. So it looks like all the Google stuff is having some issues. Uh, but now I've not received an update from from cousin Jay, but he still is gonna set the new game on the Sloop Picks website, and he can set the total score on the Sloop Picks website. So mm-hmm. we can't tell you guys what he picked for that, but but know that we're still taking care of that stuff behind the scenes. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we'll go ahead and cover that game first. The Iowa versus Minnesota game, which is a Friday night game at seven o'clock on Fox Sports One. I see here that Iowa is a three and a half point favorite. And again, we don't have Jay's picks here, but we'll go ahead and pick them here. Uh, I I think this is a really even matched here. Uh, I know Minnesota's had a lot of issues, especially in the kicking game. Ohio State wouldn't know that, know of anything like that. But no. <laughs> I'll, I'll take Minnesota. I mean, you're handicapping Minnesota by three and a half. I think this is a pretty even match here. And even we think Minnesota is overall just a better team from what I've, what I know Minnesota could be here. So you're handicapping Minnesota here. I'll, I'll take them. I'll take them here. All right. So. I'm taking Iowa, and here's why. Minnesota has one win, and it's against Illinois. We we only know we only really know two things about the Big Ten right now. Ohio State's good, Illinois is bad. That's it. That's really all we know for Rock Solid Shore right now. And Minnesota's one win is against Illinois. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no and no there's no but also they (laughs) lost but there's an also also they lost to michigan and they lost to michigan handedly and we now know michigan's pretty terrible Mm -hmm. i'm gonna go with iowa okay all right fair enough all right next up here we have our second favorite ohio school maybe (laughs) <laughs> um, we have also Friday night game, a pair of double headers here, uh, East Carolina and the fighting fickles of Cincinnati. Cincinnati is a 27 and a half point favorite and Jared. Yeah. It needs to be higher. Uh, I'll take, I'll <laughs> take the fighting fickles here. I'll I'm... just know East care. East Carolina is just Bad. not a good is not a good football team. It's 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 pretty bad. It's pretty bad for the for the Pirates right now. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, Cincinnati's last win 28 points. Previous to that 39 points. Previous to that against a pretty good SMU team. Pretty good. 29 points. They're winning these games by th- Again, they they covered this number against a much better SMU team. They covered this number against a much better Memphis team. Uh, Houston's also not very good, so I don't. They're probably maybe still better, but regardless, gonna go Cincinnati. Uh, they've been winning these games against these teams by these many points. Eventually, they'll stumble. Eventually, they'll have a bad game, and that's fine. But I'm not gonna take the bet on the eventual i'm gonna go with the trend and that trend is with cincinnati all right all right let's see what jay says jay says here he picks cincinnati uh ride with them until they prove otherwise see i know i know nothing about the pirates from ecu and don't really care to riding with coach fickle whom i could see going to texas next year it's the one place I don't want to place them, actually. Mm-hmm. Well, one of two places. I don't want to see him in Michigan, but I think he would <laughs> succeed in Michigan. I think Michigan should go for it. I don't think Fickle takes it. I'd rather, I think Fickle at 
Illinois would be more interesting. I still think Illinois is a sleeping giant, but that's a different conversation for a different day. Mm-hmm. I, he, he still should have got Michigan state. I, I, I see him like maybe holding out a couple more years than going to Michigan state. That's still, <laughs> I'm not letting go of that. It makes too yeah. much sense. Yep. Yeah. All right. Next up here, we got, we got another big 10 matchup here of Indiana, <laughs> the undefeated <laughs> Hoosiers of Indiana. Three, no taken on Sparty. Noon game on, I don't see where it's at, but it's a noon game. <laughs> uh, let me see if I... I believe uh, it's ABC. ABC. It's ABC. It is on ABC there. Um, Indiana is a seven and a half point favorite. I'll, I'll take I'll take Indiana here. I know Sparty is just a bad, bad team. Sparty's bad. Sparty's bad. Hoosiers, good. Good team. Rutgers beat Michigan State. By 11 points. Mm-hmm. Rutgers is a better team. Or excuse me, Indiana is a better team than Rutgers. Uh, they beat Michigan. Uh, Indiana beat Michigan last week by 17 points. Despite the fact that I know Michigan State beat Michigan. I know that. But I still think Michigan's the actually the better football team. I'm going to go going to go Indiana. I think that Penix is looking really good. I think it's going to be insanely interesting to see Ohio State play Indiana a week mm-hmm. from now. Yep. All right. Jay says here. I also want to point out Indiana is currently 3-0 and against the spread. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Uh, Jay says here, shouldn't be close. Would probably take this at minus 20 for Indiana. Yes, I I agree. 20 would 20 would give me a little bit of heartburn i would personally put this at about 17 that's ex- that's the exact number i was thinking is like 17 and a half right there <laughs> yeah all right next up here penn state taking on at nebraska this is a noon game as well on fox sports one uh penn state is a three and a half point favorite from what I've seen with Nebraska, I, I had high hopes for them. I thought that like, Hey, they're, they're actually not that bad of a team, but from what I saw last week, yeah, they're that bad of a team. Hmm. I'll, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take Penn state here. I cover. Maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I'm stubborn. Maybe I'm, I, I don't know, but I, I refuse to believe that, this Nittany Lion team is actually an 0-3 football team. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And Nebraska, I always saw as a team that, while trending upward, was in transition. And mm-hmm. I just believe that Penn State is a much better football team, even if they haven't shown it yet. Yeah. I mean, they they played Indiana, which we knew was no. Now it's a good team. We now they know. Lost yeah. to them. And in overtime and they lost to Ohio state and Maryland was just on their a game there against Penn state. Maryland, Maryland cares about that game a lot more than Penn state does. Maryland is kind Mm -hmm. it's kind of like the Ohio state Penn state dynamic where Penn state's like, you're our rival and Ohio state's like, aren't you cute? It's the same thing, but opposite with, with Penn state and Maryland. Maryland's like, you're our rival. And Penn State's like, aren't you cute? Except that Maryland actually slapped him. <laughs> yeah. Well, sad news out of um, Penn State, though. They're yeah. One of their running backs, uh, Journey Brown, is officially um, leaving football permanently due to um, a heart issue. I won't even try to pronounce it, but it's pretty yeah. much like the heart muscle is just thickening and it. Yeah, it will cause him a lot more harm if he continues to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a it's a terrible situation for Journey Brown. Um, uh, it's, yeah, it, that's, all, that's all I have to say is that's a terrible situation for him. Yeah. All right. Um, did you did you pick Penn State or do you have Nebraska here? I picked Penn State. Okay. I don't know if I ever actually said those words, <laughs> so it's fine. All right. Uh, Jay says here, as Jared has been saying, the two and a half and three and a half line is the game changer. I'll take the black shirts. 
I would expect to see more McCaffrey this week as a home dog versus the not so happy Valley kittens, who I think has completely checked out on Franklin. So he's going with the Cornhuskers. Hmm. He's probably right. <laughs> Just statistically speaking, he's more likely to be right than us. That being said, I have to ask you a question, Jay. Why on earth are you listening to me? <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing, man? All right. Um, next up here. Next up here, we have Notre Dame taking on Boston College. This is a 3.30 game on ABC. Um, we have here, Notre Dame is a 13 and a half point favorite. Who do you have here, Jared? I'm going Boston College. Dog, please quit shaking the desk. <laughs> you're you're making the camera all j- oh come on get out <laughs> no, it's get out worse. get out from under that's because I'm talking to her so she's getting excited. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I, I'm going Boston College here strictly because I think that Notre Dame's riding real high off that loss. Probably a lot of expelled energy. I'm just gonna they're probably gonna come into this one a little bit flat. I think Boston College has the ability to make this game very interesting. Like we'll be paying attention to this game at the end of this game. I'm pretty sure. And that's not to say that Boston college wins, but I think that they could. And I think that they'll end up losing by less than a score. And and we, and I think that that's, that's well under the 13 and a half. So I'm going to go Boston college. Yeah. And we've seen it too, where teams, they have a big win and then, Next week, they just kind of just not necessarily fall apart, but they just don't take their next opponent as seriously, or maybe they're just still sore or still kind of hung over from the big victory. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be one of those games. And what we've seen with Notre Dame too early, earlier this year, and like they had a 12 to 7 victory over Louisville. Their offense doesn't click. Maybe, be, maybe they fixed. Maybe they fixed it since that game, but I, I don't know. I think this. I think they're going to fall asleep here, and I think that Boston College will definitely make it closer. So I'll I'll pick um, Boston College here as well. Jay says here, I think Notre Dame wins a closer than the experts think type of game after the emotional win last week. The Golden Eagles will keep it close. See, we're on the same page. Uh, mm-hmm. t- they. They, they beat Duke pretty handedly. Texas State, three-point game. North Carolina, four-point game. Pittsburgh, overtime game, one point. Uh, Virginia Tech does blow out Boston College. Then they do blow out Georgia Tech. But then a six-point game to Clemson, a three-point game to Syracuse. The majority of their games are close. Are very close games. Boston Who College. Top five opponent. Boston College is one of those teams. Mm-hmm. And I think that this this week will be the same. It'll be one of those games. Now, will they win by six or less points or win by six, six or less points? We'll find out. But I think this game finishes at with the winner six or less points. All right. Um, let's do a quick ad read. Ad read real quick here in the middle of our sloop picks. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. All right, let's hear from our good friend over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Sure thing. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company, lots of, like I said, lots of cool flavors and variations of beans to choose from over at Iron Bean Coffee Company. I'm going to hold this guy up right here next to my head for scale. It's a big bag of coffee, am I right? Uh, This is the Unicorn. You don't, I haven't cracked this one open yet. I'm looking forward to it. I've been working my way uh, because I also bought a sampler. So this is one of the little sample bags. So I'm working my way through the sampler. Uh, that's why I haven't cracked open my ride or die or my unicorn yet. Uh, but you don't, I don't know what's in this bag. It's a, it's an R and D test coffee. It's a, it's a completely random bag of coffee. I have no idea what's in it. We'll find out. It'll be exciting. Uh, like I said, if you are the type of person who is maybe uh, prone to uh, a little bit of Netflix syndrome where there's maybe just a little too much and you don't know what to do. You can get a sampler bag. Like I said, you get, you get six of these little bags 
And I think that's a great way to go if you're maybe just looking for which one of those is right for you. Uh, and of those, I'm sure you'll find the one that's right for you and then you can keep buying it. In fact, if you are the type of person who likes to sort of stick with one coffee and go with it, they have a subscribe and much like Amazon. If you've ever seen Amazon subscribe and save iron bean coffee has a similar service where you can subscribe to a bag of coffee and just get it a little bit cheaper and just have it basically a subscription service to a bag of coffee. Um, if that's not the thing you want to do, like I said, there's a great selection. Uh, some of the coffees are available in K cups, some of their more popular ones. And if you're looking to get a gift for a coffee lover in your life, but you're not sure which one of these coffees they want again, sampler box, that's a great Avenue or gift cards. Got a coffee snob in your life. Get them an iron bean gift card. Let them pick out their own coffee. I like a I like a specific gift card for Christmas. You know, I don't want to just give someone an Amazon card because that card kind of just says I don't know what you want. But if you give someone like, oh, I know you love coffee, here's an Iron Bean Coffee gift card. That goes a lot further, I promise you. Because if I know coffee snobs, and I do, because I am one, they want to pick out their own coffee. That's just piece of advice me to you they want to pick out their own coffee so you can find that you can find a bunch more again free shipping over fifty dollars you're supporting an ohio veteran owned company they're out of toledo and you can find all of that at ironbeancoffee.com that's iron bean coffee company america's local coffee roaster this episode of the sloopcast also brought to you by the mad canadian barbecue company mad canadian has been a good friend of ours for the past year and with great seasonings, how could Come you not great love responsibility. the responsibility. How could you not love the guy? I, I love the guy. Yes. He's great. He's a great guy. We, we enjoy him a lot. Other than the anger emails, he's great. Other than that, other than that, and the fact that he cheats at the Ryan Day helmet sticker game. If you want to know what the hell I'm talking about, join our Discord, discord.thesloopcast.com. What you got in your, your hand there? It looks like you want to... You want to really bring this forward here. The savory, yeah. the savory. What, what do you, what do you put the savory on Jared? Uh, really great. I think specifically shredded chicken, shredded pork, I think are, are any sort of, I think like really, I, and again, I think it goes on a lot of things, but my personal preference is uh, a light meat. Uh, so even, I, I think it would even go good on say like a lamb. Why mm -hmm. not? So, or maybe a, maybe a pork chop. I think it'd go good on a pork chop. I think that was, that would be my go-tos for the savory. All right. What other one did you have in your hand? No, that was it. I had the savory. Oh, it looked like you had a different one there. That was my beer. I won't, this is, oh, that was your beer. That oh. was, this is the mad can. I won't tell you what I'm drinking right now. Cause this is mad Canadian time. Yes. Um, I will go with the, let's do the, the, the old fashioned here, the old fashioned, just Ooh. like the drink here has a, has a little bourbon in it, a little uh, cherry in it, a little cherry in it. It's a really unique seasoning. So you want to, you want to, you want to spice up your, you want to spice up your, your meal there, put a little old fashioned on it to get, give people a surprise taste. Yeah. I, I think uh, you could do like a really nice marinade for either maybe That's like a, a roast I actually did this. Um, I was it a flank steak. I believe I, I did this on. You could also, I think, do this for ribs. I think it would work really well. Did the old fashioned. I did a little bit of bourbon. The alcohol cooks off. So just so you guys know, you can use bourbon because I do. You can use bourbon in a marinade because you once you heat it up, the alcohol burns off. So you're not going to yep. get anyone intoxicated. Um, yes. And, and, and some cherry juice. Some cherry juice some bourbon and make some, some old fashioned. Uh, you make some great memories. <laughs> really surprise your friend. You really surprise your friends with, with the seasoning here. Yeah. Be sure to check out those and all the other great seasonings that the mad Canadian has over at the mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the mad Canadian BBQ.com promo code sloopcast one zero at checkout for 10% off Mad Canadian barbecue company where they have your butt covered. All right, Kyle, where were we with the sloop picks? Uh, we are at the Wisconsin Michigan game. Wisconsin heading on up to Ann Arbor, where Wisconsin is a two and a half 
point favorite. This is a 730 game on ABC. So this is Kirk in the gang then. Yes, sir. Uh, I will tell you right now, even though we've only seen, for, seen them for one game, I'll go with the Badgers. Hell yeah. From what I saw in one game versus what I've seen in three games of Michigan, yeah, I'll I'll take my chances with Wisconsin here. And it's less than a field goal. Yeah, I'll yeah. take Wisconsin here. It's I'll not, take them. It's not enough to scare me off. Again, as, as Kyle said, we've we've seen Wisconsin play one game, and it was against a, a, a no, there Wisconsin. It was against the Minnesota team that we all thought maybe a little too much of at the time, which, which does make Wisconsin, maybe our evaluation of Wisconsin, maybe look a little bit better than it should. Cause maybe we thought Minnesota was a better team than they were at the time. But all I need to tell you is this. I've seen Michigan's defensive backs play and I've seen Graham Mertz play. Yes. Exactly. I, I've only seen Graham Mertz play one game of college football, but, but he looked amazing. And I'm telling you, highly recruited guy, Ohio State wanted him. Part of the reason, I'm telling you this right now, part of the reason why Ohio State ends up going and getting Justin Fields, or maybe part of the reason why they don't end up getting Graham Mertz, I guess it depends upon how you choose to tell that story. Maybe I can get, I want to ask one of the recruiting guys over to scoop and, and find out what the correct timeline there is, is because Ohio State didn't get Graham Mertz that they end up getting Justin Fields because he ends up going to Wisconsin. Ohio state goes to the transfer portal. Yep. Now I don't think that those two things actually probably line up because I think the Mertz thing happened a good while before, but you know, right. they'll don't let the truth get in the way of a good story, Kyle. Yes. All right. Uh, do you, so I take it that you got, um, I got Wisconsin. You got Wisconsin. I got Wisconsin right. big. All right. All right, let's see what Jay says. Jay says, UM has hit the struggle bus hard these last few weeks. Now, I don't know if they have checked out just like Penn State has or not. To me, this is either Wisconsin win and cover close or UM rout as they rally behind Mr. Khakis and expose Wisconsin for their long layoff. I'll take the former and have Wisconsin with a cover and win by at least seven points. I think Wisconsin blows them out. Mm -hmm. All right. Last game here, Jared, we have Northwestern and Purdue. Oh, and Kyle, so Kyle. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to do final score for Wisconsin and Michigan. We do. Yes. Well, not, we don't have to do final score, but we do have to do total score for the tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. I have 52. I have 55. Mm, close. I, and I, and I have that at about a, I don't, I don't feel like doing math on the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like, it's like a four. I, I think it's like a 35 to, or probably like a 40, probably like a 40 to 14, 41 to 14 type situation. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see our last game here, Jared. We have Northwestern and Purdue, which I see that just a couple of hours ago that this game has been moved up from 7.30 to 5 o'clock. Yes, sir. Help fill that uh, Ohio State void. Mm -hmm. as, yep. it's on, as it's on the Big Ten Network, the Ohio State game is supposed to be on the Big Ten Network. So, yep, might as well. All right, uh, let's see. We have here Northwestern is a two-and-a-half point favorite. So who do you have here, Jared? Uh, this is, these are two teams. I'm not really sure about, uh, well, didn't, one I thing's didn't... for sure. One thing's for sure, Jared. Yeah. They're both undefeated. Uh, they are both undefeated. That's technically true. Congratulations, Kyle. <laughs> math checks out the math. You know what, Kyle, the math checks out. <laughs> uh, it's just, I don't know. Northwestern. It's weird. Cause I didn't think a lot of them coming into the season and now I'm kind of forced to 
reevaluate that. Maryland, a team that we both uh, are high on all of a sudden, they crushed Maryland in that first game. We keep saying two has looked great, except for that first game. Two has looked great, except for that first game. Well, that first game was Northwestern. Was that a young guy getting his jitters out? Or was that Northwestern's defense being that good? I tend to lean towards the former rather than the latter. So it's, I'm not a hundred percent sure what to do with Northwestern and, but I think when it comes down to it, I just don't think Purdue's all that good. I think is is basically, I don't think Purdue is all that good. Again, we talk about one of the things we know for sure that Illinois is bad. They looked fine against Illinois mm-hmm. and Northwestern, a team we don't know a lot about, but that looked really good against the Maryland team that Kyle and I were concerned about coming into this game uh, before it got canceled. So based on that, I'm going to go with Northwestern, but I, I say that this is the game where I just sort of flip a coin. Yeah. Same here. It's, it's tough. Uh, I, I picked Northwestern here. I just, their defense, I've just really kept them in games. Their offense, not as not that good to really keep them consistent winning games. Uh, but I mean, they have, they have been so far this year, but their defense definitely keeping them in games here. Uh, I just, I just like Northwestern to win here, and two and a half is pretty much a pick them to me. So I'll, I'll just take Northwestern. Yeah, when, when when it's under that three, who cares? Mm-hmm. Three yeah. and a half, you have to pay a little bit more attention to. Two and a half, just just pick a winner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just one of those where it's just really, yeah. All right, uh, let's see. Jay says here. There are typical, they are a typical Northwestern team and will keep Rondale and company in check. Peyton will keep it close to the vest and make enough plays to walk out of West Lafayette with a win and cover. There you go. I was just looking up Northwestern and yeah, every game that they've won, well, well, it's only three games, but <laughs> other than the Maryland game, they won by one against Iowa and they won by eight against Nebraska. But they won against how many against Maryland? 40. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And if we look at Iowa, which they played one less game. Um, Iowa, why did I say Iowa? Purdue. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. Got the wrong team there. Uh, Purdue here, yeah, with their one game canceled. Yeah, they've won by four to Iowa and seven to Illinois. And we both know that Illinois is a pretty bad team. Yes, sir. All right, that is our slip picks for the week here. All right, Kyle, let's uh, let's do some Ask Sloopcast and let's GTFO. All right. Let's go ahead and ask some questions. Duncan from the Discord asks us, has a head coach ever lost? And I assume this means as a head coach. That's He does not specify, but that's my assumption. Has a head coach ever lost from both sides of a major college rivalry game? Ooh. I'll say that it's not too often that you have the same coach be the head coach on different sides of a college major, a major college football rivalry. Uh, My first thought, and I'd have to fact check this would be Nick Saban who coached both LSU and Alabama. I don't, I can't tell you off the top of my head. This is one of those questions. We don't, I don't look at these questions ahead of time. I never look at the questions ahead of time. This is one of those ones where I wish I had, uh, because this one would require actual research. But if I were to venture a guess, my guess would be Nick Saban, LSU, Alabama, but I, I, that's a guess. I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah. I listeners, uh, Twitter, YouTube comments, the discord, uh, however you choose to uh, email, uh, Twitter. I think I already said Twitter. However you choose to reach out to us, let us know. Uh, do you know the answer to this question? I, I ventured my guess. It's only a guess. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's really curious. I'm, I am definitely really curious about that. All right, next up, another Duncan. Duncan from the Discord. Describe the relationship between the NCAA and Division I football. Uh, NCAA does what it's told, and Division I football. And by Division I football, I mean Division One a football. Mm-hmm. Or excuse me, Kyle, the FBS, because we can't say that division a is better than double a the fbs uh does what it wants again this is the only ncaa sport who does its postseason completely outside of the overview of the ncaa the ncaa divides licensing money the ncaa acts as a police officer to about eligibility and stuff like that. But if COVID in 2020 has taught us anything, it's that the NCAA does nothing. This was the NCAA's opportunity to be a leader and to help provide some consistency and some leadership. And they basically put their hands in their pockets and let the conferences do whatever the hell they wanted. So what's the NCAA? It's a joke. That's what it is. That and they and they organize a basketball tournament. That's what that's what the NCAA does. It sits around. It 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 acts as a joke and it organizes a basketball tournament. Mm-hmm. <sighs> All right. I Next hate, question I, I hate here. The NCAA. I think I think he was triggering me on purpose. Yeah. Uh, next question here. Uh, let's see. Mad Canadian asks, would you consider going from a head coach at BGSU to a running back coach at USC a step up? No. No. That's your division one single A head coach. Mm-hmm. You that's that's way better than a division unless unless you're like Brian Hartline and you're on the record stating that you're at Ohio state, no matter what that that's his role in life. He's going to be at Ohio state. Now, if I were Brian Hartline and BGSU says, want to be the head coach, we're moving. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. so even Brian Hartline, and again, I don't think he would, but if I were him, I would, uh, yeah. You position coach, even the best university isn't as good as the head coach at, a place like Bowling Green. Agree, disagree, Kyle? No, I agree. Yeah. I mean, there there's a there's a former Ohio State coach who was a head coach at Bowling Green. Once upon a time ago. Once upon a time ago. Yeah, yeah I, and, I agree. I, I'd go And he was a wide receiver coach at Notre Dame prior. So mm-hmm. that's that's what Urban Meyer in case you don't know what Kyle's talking about, that's what Urban Meyer did. He went from position coach and then they we're talking about a point in time in which Notre Dame was actually like under Lou Holtz and Mm -hmm. yeah, no, I no head coach is a step up over a running back coach at any other program within, I would say all of FBS one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or within all of FBS and even within all of division one, even at least even into the double A's. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Suncard asks, describe the relationship between earthquakes and weather. They aren't the same thing. Next. Duncan asks another question. The Buckeyes make the playoffs and the permit 25% stadium capacity. What's the get in price for tickets? Trick question. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. Uh, you know, Pfizer announces a vaccine that's great. It's great news. The science but. behind it is all great. But, but. <laughs> uh, that vaccine is not going to be available for like another four months. Mm. And even when it's a and then even if it's available in four months, I don't think it's going to be like the flu shot where you can just walk into Kroger and get one. Nope. It's going to go to front. It's going to go to front line folks. And high risk people first. Yeah. So I, I don't, uh, I don't foresee a, a trick question. Ohio. There's not going to be any general access to an Ohio state game this year. Yep. 
I just don't see it happening. Parents, How do I approach my wife about borrowing from our 401k <laughs> to buy football tickets? Oh, your wife doesn't have to worry. Yeah. Again, trick question. It's not going to happen. All right. Um, Brawley asks, cases are rising, games are falling. Is the season in danger? It has been. It has been from the start. I think it depends on what you mean by the season. I think one way or another there's going to be a college football championship game. I, I think that that happens. I don't know if all of the teams that we want to be eligible for that are eligible for that. I, I don't know if we're happy with how it goes down. Um, is the season in danger? Is Ohio state's season in danger? Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you guys. It absolutely is. Mm -hmm. It kind of goes into the next question here too. What is the over under percentage that a chance that the Michigan game happens that the game happens? 50, 50. And nah, I don't want to say 50, 50, but it's higher than 50, 50, 51, 49. No, I'm, I'm feeling very doom and I'm feeling very doom and gloomy right now because I just, again, all the, DeWine's press conference was also in our real relative recent <laughs> history. Uh, it's been two days for you guys. We just got done with yeah. it. Um, I'm, so I'm feeling real. Do I'm feeling real doom and gloomy right now. It's, I'm, it's, I'm thinking it's, it's 60, 40. No, I think it's much. It's, I think it's realistically much better than that. Okay. I think it's like, I think it's like 90, 10. Ooh. I'm just right. because of the Maryland game, because of the, press conference I'm, I'm feeling real doom and gloomy right now if i actually walked away from this podcast saying 50 50 i'd be regretting it tomorrow when i record yeah. when i when i did the edit as teams begin to lose hope at anything of a season think illinois do players begin to relax and put other teams at risk yes 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 i think that's happening with lsu right now mm -hmm. yes, yes absolutely uh this the college football playoff has to be moved back, right? Yes, we hope. Yes, <laughs> that's it. That barely qualifies as an ask Sloopcast question. That's just you making a comment and putting a question mark at the end of it, yeah. Brawley. I like this. I like this last question. What's your favorite YouTube rabbit hole that you have gone down? Um, racing marbles. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. YouTube commentary channels are a favorite of mine. Um, I'm, I'm going a little nerdy. Oh no, not you, Kyle. Never. There are times when I, I get nos nostalgic with old games. Mm -hmm. So sometimes maybe doing like looking at either if I'm more of a, when I just listen to music, there's some great, like, remixes or making games 8-bit style that's always entertaining or even like speed running like yeah. watching speed runs are actually interests me yeah uh i any anything i'm 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 all in on this among us craves both on youtube and on twitch mm -hmm. i'm all about it so that's been a thing i've been all about recently yeah it's entertaining. It's entertaining and watch friendships fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last question here. Austin formation asks. This is not our last question, but I think you missed one. I missed the whole picture, but go ahead. It's oh, fine. I did. Yes. <laughs> uh, Austin formation. How does not playing the Maryland game affect the Indiana game going forward? As that is the biggest game of the season? Question mark. Biggest game um, of the season is always Michigan. First and foremost. But so, I get what you're saying, and you're also right. <laughs> how does not playing affect? Well, you can look at it two ways. One, it gives Ohio State more days to prepare for Indiana. Yeah. Uh, secondly, you could look at it negatively, be like, well, the changes that Ohio State would have implemented against Maryland, did that work or not? Yeah. If it didn't, all right, let's fix it some more there. So you can look at it either way there. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle nails this. You. Maryland could have been used as a prep game for Indiana. Who's, and I, I think it's fair to say Indiana is actually just Maryland, but better. I think that's who 
Indiana is. I think Indiana is who Maryland wants to be. So, you, yeah, you could have used that as a prep game to get better for Indiana. But at the same time, he's just more time to prep for Indiana. Yeah, Kyle nailed that. I don't know why I just felt the need to repeat what he's just said. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see here. We What question have we missed here, Jared? Uh, let's see. We have from Cooper. Uh, yep. Cooper here. How can Wisconsin play the same number of players being out can't after canceling two games? Well, he's ba- yeah, basically saying that if you're out for 21 days, how does 21 days equals two games? And I'm going to say, shut up and watch football. <laughs> yeah, that's actually <laughs> really la, 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 la. <laughs> football's happening. Don't <laughs> don't bring math into this. That's actually a really good point. I don't want to think about it. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Sun Card. What is your favorite movie and why is it Step Brothers? <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like we're in, a, in an area right now with movies that like true singular focused comedies are kind of dying. Um. Now, maybe the streaming services are going to help bring those back. But we weren't seeing a lot of, like, straight-up comedy comedies anymore. And I kind of think Step Brothers may be, like, not the last, but among the last of, like, must-see epic big comedies. Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, I think maybe the streaming services are going to help write this and that this trend of... Because people just weren't going to go see, like straight up comedies and movie theaters. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of killing comedies again. Now that Hulu, Amazon, Netflix are paying big money for movies. Maybe that, maybe that writes itself a bit. Um, Mm. So hopefully, like I said, that writes itself a bit because I think what you see now are like hybrid movies that are funny. Take like Thor Ragnarok, for example, was one of the funniest movies of the year, despite the fact it was also a Thor movie. It was also just hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, some of my favorites, though, Lord of the Ring trilogy. That's always a really good one. Uh, I mean, I was sticking to comedies personally. I, I when he says Step Brothers is a, gotcha. Well, uh, okay. Please just answer the question. I'm, I'm gonna just shut answering up. the question. The, um, I always like um, Shawshank is another really good movie, a favorite yeah. of mine too. Really going out on some limbs here, Kyle. Yep. Or if I want to go, if, or if I want to go, um, nostalgia here, even though looking back, it's not a good movie. <laughs> the original TMT movie. Oh, why'd you got to say it wasn't a good movie? Well, it really isn't looking back now, but <laughs> I still enjoy it. <laughs> our, our movie poster, which we released our, excuse me, our game poster, which is based on a movie, uh, was for TMNT too. Uh, so yeah, Mm -hmm. it's, uh, that, that was the inspiration for this week's game poster for a game that's now not happening. I'm kind of thankful I released the poster before the game got canceled. Cause then I would have to ask, Oh no, do I release it? Do I not release it? I still don't know what I'm going to do with my Purdue poster. I made one. And I, then I just sort of been keeping it in my pocket. Because, well, what if they meet each other in the in the uh, Big Ten championship game? I don't think that's going to happen. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with the Purdue poster. I might just release it at the end of the year. And uh, that's all the questions. That's all the questions. Uh, now, Kyle, we are actually going to probably finish this episode in under an hour 10, which is pretty good for us as of lately. Mm-hmm. Um, we only had to get an Ohio state game canceled to, to accomplish <laughs> yes. that task. All so right. I'm going to go ahead and go into my spiel. Um, we have a bunch of, we have a bunch of, uh, great people joining our discord server who aren't, uh, exclusively patrons. We have opened up our, our discord server for general access. There are now premium channels that are just for the patrons and public channels that are open to everybody. And you can go to discord.thesloopcast.com to access the server. If you're unfamiliar with discord, 
Uh, it's somewhere in between a message board and a group chat, I think is my one line explanation of what Discord is. So it's an Ohio State centric group chat with Sloopcast fans is essentially what it is. Um, we're doing a bunch of cool stuff with it. We now have a, uh, a game in which Ryan Daybot, who is a robot named after Ryan Day, gives you helmet stickers. Or maybe he takes them away. You're never quite sure. <laughs> so <laughs> we've all been having a little too much fun with that in the Discord. Uh, that's that's so that that's been our our big happenings lately. And the Discord channel is the Ryan Day bot. Uh, so yeah, you can find all of that at discord.thesloopcast.com. And you can find all of our other stuff, including our T-shirt stores. I'm wearing uh, 7071 merch right now. This is the Dayton Force. It's a uh, a Dayton sports team that only exists inside of my head. So in case you want to be a Dayton force fan, join, join, join a very, very, very small fan base. Uh, you can check out 7071.thesloopcast.com. You can find the Sloopcast merch, including that poster and this blanket and a bunch of other cool stuff at merch.thesloopcast.com. And if you haven't been able to write down all of these links and you don't remember what the promo code is for the mad Canadian or the website is for iron bean coffee company. You can find all of those links, including the discord link, including a Spotify link, including a YouTube link, including a stitcher. No, probably not the stitcher link, but including an Apple podcast link. I'm just reading my graphic. Now, all of those links, all of those links, you can find them at thesloopcast.com. All it is is a, is a site that gives you links. That's all that is. So you can find all of that and more, thesloopcast.com. Uh, Kyle, that's my entire thing. Do you have anything in Kyle's Corner for this week? A um, couple of things. Well, one, again, best of luck to my hometown, Columbus Grove. They get to play in state semifinals against Coldwater in Division Six football. Looking forward to that. I think they play like at seven o'clock on Saturday. So best of luck to them Bulldogs. Who are they playing? Coldwater. Hmm. How's that going to go? Coldwater is really tough. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Very tough. I don't know. I don't follow college or high school football, especially division six, all that closely. But I know that if it's a division six team and I've heard of them, that that's probably bad news for whoever's playing them. Yeah. Just kind of like um, Marion local is always a small school, but they've always known to be really good and always go far in the playoffs too. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, anything can happen, but wish, wish the dogs best of luck on Saturday. Yeah. I, I know uh, my former high school, the St. Clairsville red devils fell last week. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, uh, it's not easy out there for a high school team. Uh, a lot of these kids had really, really shortened schedules this year. Uh, cause the regular season was practically non-existent. And then if you didn't make it far in the playoffs, you didn't really get to, and that, that all sucked. And yep. that, uh, so I'm, I'm happy for the teams that have gotten some semblance of a real season by getting to go far in the playoffs. And even if you don't, you know, like I said, even if Columbus Grove, uh, does not make it past this week, they at least got some semblance of a full season, which I think in 2020 is a thing to be thankful for. Um, yeah. And one, which, one, inter one interesting thing about this is that a lot of these seniors here were on the basketball team for last, uh, last spring and they were undefeated going into the early playoffs and the season got cut off right then and there. So they had a lot to, a lot to play for, for this year to kind of are, make up for that. How, how are we looking on winter sports in high school? Is that a thing that's still up in the air? I don't know. I haven't really looked, okay. to be yeah. honest. I'm, Again, just, I'm just worried about here and now. Right yeah, now, that's, so. that's fair. Uh, that's another great thing. Uh, if you guys want to, if anyone out there knows a little bit more about the high mm -hmm. school sports situation in, in Ohio, uh, mm -hmm. YouTube comments, Twitter, Discord are great places to reach out to us. Yeah. Um, one last thing, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, the 21st, your Columbus crew yes. taking on the Red Bulls on in the first round of the MLS 
playoffs. I'm not going to lie. It sounded like you said balls. Red balls. <laughs> balls. Okay. Okay. All right. But. That's all, that's all I got here. All right. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a Columbus based band called Snarls. Uh, you can find links to all of their stuff down in the doobly doo. Uh, there'll be a song and a band camp link and the name of the song and a YouTube link and all of that stuff down in the, in the doobly doos. And for all of the other links that you might want to find, including the merch, including the discord, including the Patreon, uh, including the YouTube channel, including Spotify, Apple, all that crap. Just go to the sloopcast.com. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to the local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Snarls. All right, so quick shout out. Quick shout out to the application called Ear Trumpet, which prevented everyone who's currently listening to this from hearing the constant discord alerts that are currently hitting my computer. <laughs> yes. I hear it on my iPad. I'm like, Oh, I got to move that away from the microphone. <laughs> yes. I, I, I love that. Everyone loves the Ryan day sticker game, <laughs> but my God, yeah. the alerts are just constantly popping off mm-hmm. on my computer. Hey, at, at least we have an action football. We do. We have Max and foot. We had, we watched Ohio play last night. We have some games on tonight, tonight as we're recording. Yeah. Which I've what's never mind. Don't, don't give me an update. We need to, we need to end, <laughs> we need to end the show. Yes. All right. Uh, I'll start this one. We are about to rejoin our audio listeners. want to once again thank snarls for ending today's episode and i'd like to once again thank the iron bean coffee company for sponsoring today's episode kyle they have an amazing selection of coffees i'm going to talk a little bit about the fear no evil uh, this is a black coffee it's not a dark coffee it is a black coffee it is dark beyond dark it's roasted to the brink of flames this rich dark Rich, rich, black, dark roast is void of all light. The sheen is of polished armor and the feel is like cocoa butter. If you like dark coffees, they also have the integrity. Uh, the integrity is the flagship coffee over at the iron bean coffee company. Uh, it is dark roasted, makes a great espresso. Yes, I said it. I was, I was, I'm always nervous. I'm going to say that wrong. And uh, if you like dark coffees, you can also check out the Odin. Uh, Coffee will keep you fighting long after you should have gone to Valhalla. Uh, There's also the Fierce. That's another dark roast. They have lots of medium roasts too. I'm just reading the dark roast because that's what I'm doing for this particular ad read. Check out ironbeancoffee.com. The Fierce is a dark roast coffee made 100% Arabica beans to give you the edge and confidence to slay the day. Again, lots of great coffees they have a sampler pack you can buy uh free shipping over 50 dollars. gift cards are available all of this coffee is fair trade certified you don't have to worry about more the morality of where your coffee beans come from they're usda organic and they're based out of toledo ohio and oh by the way they are veteran owned and the beans are not roasted until you order them again we're recording this on veterans day support a veteran owned company this veterans day week and you can do that at the iron bean coffee company that's iron bean coffee com or excuse me ironbeancoffee.com america's local coffee roaster this episode of the soupcast also brought to you by the mad canadian barbecue company mad canadian barbecue company yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you going Kyle? You. It, it did not work I was open I, for a reaction. I, I don't know. Okay, just do do the ad read. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to go off of what the Mad Canadian has here off of his website. Let's let's go, let's do an odd product that we normally don't talk about. What goes well on for vegetable rubs? Ooh, vegetable rubs. Vegetable rubs. Well, the first one here that he has on his site here, the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter would be a great vegetable rub. It's salty. It uh, has a citrus pepper blend, a great um, salt kick in it. It could be great as a finishing salt or to a rim of your, 
of your um, Bloody Mary glass. Another one, the Ope. The Ope, it's a, it's an Ohio seasoning. It's, it's got ranch in it. Um, it's, it's got, very Midwesterny. It's yeah. perfect for Ohio. It's, it's, it's smoked ranch. I, I don't know what other explanation you need other than the fact that it's smoked ranch. Mm, yes. And another one here, let's go with the savory. By the way, I, I have a feeling you could probably take that Ope and just mm-hmm. pour some of it into like just some sour cream. Mm-hmm. Boom, instant chip dip. Yep. Uh, the last one here, the savory here. Um, it's a, he has here, this is the exact season we put on our pulled pork here at the Mad Canadian Barbecue. It's a salty, savory mix that is sure to be a favorite at your next barbecue. Uh, he has some more listed there, but those are a few of the great products if you want to put some of this Mad Canadian seasoning on your vegetables. Uh, be sure to check out these and much, much more over at the madcanadianbbq.com. Promo code SLOOPCAST10. That's SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. What's up, YouTube? My face, playlist for season six. Kyle's face, subscribe. You can subscribe to uh, either the Buckeye Scoop or to our YouTube channel, depending upon where you're watching this. That link is currently on Kyle's face. Uh, Subscribe to both channels, please. But listen wherever you want. So again, my my face, playlist, his face, subscribe. Peace.